I do want to get to the, the main topic today because I'm super curious about this. I've been waiting to check these videos for a while. And so we're going to be checking up uh, three videos. Uh, maybe four. Damn, these are long videos too. But I do want to get through these Bellular videos because it's almost like Bellular talking. And, and, and it's interesting, right? Because if you look at Bellular's channel, this is his clips channel, which is just like he does a podcast now. For those, for those who don't know, by the way, Bellular is like a huge uh, figure in the World of Warcraft community. Like he does uh, some really professional looking videos. He does uh, some really professional stuff around World of Warcraft. Like this is a secondary channel. That's why it's the, the, the numbers are not that impressive. If we go to channels, he's got his main channel here, which is Bellular Gaming. This is 605k subs, and it's like the most the most impressive thing about Bellular videos is just the, the sheer redonkulous quality that that he does, right? Um, like, let me just uh, get through this. He's got like a Patreon and stuff, and um, it's much higher level. Like, it's, it's stuff has got production. He's, he's got production value when he does these videos, right? So he's he's a really big figure in the World of Warcraft community. And this is why kind of like his reaction to World of Warcraft, not World of War, his reaction to Final Fantasy XIV, I feel like is going to be important for both communities as a whole. Because we all know, at least I think most people know, that follow World of Warcraft in any form, that World of Warcraft is in a really bad bad spot. At least in my opinion, World of Warcraft's in a really bad spot. Uh, and I think this is like one of the first times that Bellular is actually getting into fourteen. And you can tell the interest level of people by just looking at the views on his videos, right? Like you look at this, this is his, um, his uploads. Let's, let's go into the uploads here. And you can see like, for instance, you know, um, let's talk the next expansion of World of Warcraft, 10,000 views, right? BlizzCon canceled, 16,000 views. And then you look, Bellular's first impressions of 1457. What's next for Shadowlands? 9,000 views. The big difference is between WoW and 14, 63,000. Like you can tell that the 14 topic brings in a lot more viewership because people are super curious how this big influential, um, this big influential creator in World of Warcraft feels about this game. And that is why I think that these videos are particularly important for both communities and in a lot of ways for both communities because, um, I think that there might be interesting criticism here, and Bellular is a very experienced player that has, um, he can be very objective, because like, despite the fact that he's a huge World of Warcraft fan, he will criticize the crap out of it, which I think is a good thing, because nowadays, there are obviously a lot of people that when they're fans to a certain extent, they don't want to criticize things, and I, you know, I, I, get, I guess that I'm, I, in a way, I'm a big uh, Monster Hunter fanboy, but I also criticize Monster Hunter where I feel it needs to be criticized. So, you know, I think this is important. Big drama thumbnail and only 16,000 views. <laughs> uh, this, this, I don't think that this one's that important, though, so it's whatever. Um, let's... Oh, this one, you mean. Osri's the mythic, mythic plus controversy. It's like, that's the thing. Blizzard... Here... If I was to get into Blizzard... Into Mythic Plus, I can just tell you guys, Blizzard doesn't give a fuck about Mythic Plus, okay? They don't. They just don't. And if they tell you otherwise, they're lying to you. It's that simple. They don't give a fuck. They, they will put in the bare minimum effort when it comes to Mythic Plus, unfortunately, which is one of my favorite systems in that game to begin with, so it's very disappointing. But, you know, let's get to it. So I think the next what, thing to... Let me just see. Is the volume good? Yeah, it is. ...talk about is a game. It's another game. It's not World of Warcraft, but it is a game that I think a lot of World of Warcraft mm -hmm. players have uh, not been able to ignore, that we kind of can't ignore in a way. What game might that be, Michael? It may just be Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. <laughs> it might just be that. <laughs> All right, well... Uh... But but wait, but wait. Is, is he, he can't be in Shadowbringers yet. He just recently started. No, he, did, he didn't skip. No, you wouldn't do that. No. Getting to this much harder than I expected. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... Ooh. All right. I'm Get going ready. to kick it off with my thoughts and impressions so mm -hmm. far. I have yep. properly played the game for like four or five hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to put it this way, I'm like level 19. I have just left Gridania. Um, okay, okay. Why are you starting in Gridania? Okay, that's question number one. What is going on here? Why, why is he starting with the Ellison? You know, why? 
Just what? You start with the elves. Like, first thing. Well, I guess he... Doesn't he play a blood elf? He does play a blood elf in WoW. Yeah, I guess I was setting myself up for failure there. For my character is. So I did, like, the little, uh, you know, the initial... Uh, the initial arc. Oh, wait. In, the, in, in 14, it's not about the race. It's about the class. So we probably want it to be Dragoon or Bard or something like that. Um, starting off as an archer. Yep. So archer. So... I have a few different thoughts. I guess the first thing I want to talk about is look and feel. Yeah. Immediately, Final Fantasy XIV does not feel great if you're used to World of Warcraft it because knows. you have acceleration on the character movement, right? So you mm -hmm. hit the W key and wow, your character goes psh, instantly. You do it in Final Fantasy, there's a little curve. There's like a ramp up to your speed. That, or at least it feels like it's that. It's the animation, maybe. not speed. Ser really? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. pretty sure. Yeah, it's There's not something speed. about it. It just doesn't feel as snappy and reactive as WoW does it's to me. Because it's not. Like, this is an important thing. And I know that I, I'm pausing a lot. It's like I'm pulling an Asmund gold here. But this is an important thing for people to understand if, if they're coming from World of Warcraft. In a lot of ways, 14 is um, not as responsive. It doesn't feel as snappy. World of Warcraft is more instant. Like, you press the button, things instantly happen. In 14, you know, you got that 2.5 GCD, which feels slower, even though like I've talked about in previous videos, it only feels slower at the start because when you get to the end, you feel like you don't have enough time to do everything that you want to do in between your global cooldowns because there's a ton of abilities that you have to weave in between um, your global cooldown. So it starts getting faster, but it just doesn't feel as snappier. And this is one, was one of my biggest complaints in 14 as well is um, the way that they do, you know, the... Um, what do they call it? The, the telegraphs of the monsters. And they show you like an area of effect spell. And so that area of effect spell tells you that something's going to happen. But I, I, this is something that I've never really liked in 14, but it's just like a very distinct characteristic of the game. And that is if you are still in the telegraph, after the telegraph disappears, you're getting hit. It doesn't matter what you do, you're getting hit. Like that's it. If you are standing in the telegraph by the time it disappears, you're hit. Like that's it. doesn't matter if you... If, you can teleport to the opposite end of the world, you're still getting hit because you were there when the thing disappeared. And I preferred it if they did the telegraphs and then the actual animation of the attack hit you, but that's not how they do it. It's just a completely different system. So it, it, it's almost weird a lot of times because if you're watching like really good people raid uh, or people that know how the system works, you'll notice that they exit out and then the telegraph disappears and then they jump back in during the attack animation because the attack animation ain't going to do anything because it will only hit you if you were standing in the thing when it disappeared. So you can just go in while big explosions are happening and it doesn't matter. And that is a little... That was the, the, the hardest thing for me to adapt to in Final Fantasy XIV. That is literally the, the hardest thing to adapt with XIV. Uh, with I used to think WoW felt better, and maybe it's just me getting older, but I found WoW to be really spammy and rewarding. Yeah, th that's the thing. Um, I used to think the same way. I was like, yeah, World of Warcraft just feels kind of a little bit better, more responsive. But the thing is, with that responsiveness game, for me at least, the way that I would usually play is like, okay, what are the four abilities that I need to be doing as a tank? Okay, I'm going to bind those four abilities to the keys 4ERF. And then I'm going to roll my face all over those goddamn keys and just basically cast them every single time they're on cooldown. That's the way that I've played pretty much every single tank in the game. And then just have other keys for abilities that I have to press uh, on different times and a couple mouse buttons and stuff like that. But uh, you always have those four abilities that are just spamming. And you can't do that in 14. 14 has a very specific rotation depending on the class you're playing. So like my class paladin, you go like fast blade, riot blade, and then I forget the name of the third one, but it's the one that does the, the dot. The one that does the dot. And then you go fast blade, riot blade. And then the one that, that, that gives you repentance. And then repentance three times. And then again until the dot rotation. And then you do requiescat. And then you do Holy Spirit. And then you do... Is it Holy Spirit? Yeah, Holy Spirit. And then when you, you do Holy Spirit four times. And after you do it four times, then you do uh, confetti 
And then your rotation is over and you bring it back up again. And during this, you're also interweaving every single chance you get the circle of scorn and spirits within because they're out of global cooldown. So in between global cooldowns, you're always using those abilities when they come off a of cooldown. And you also have to use fight or flight whenever it is available. So this, there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind. It is like, whereas if you're talking to me, okay, Rakan, how do you tank in WoW? Well, uh, I run in, I press consecration, and then I go, it's like there's four abilities. I don't even remember their names, but I'm pressing them all the goddamn time <laughs> until they're out of cooldown. You spam. You spam, spam, spam. That's, that's all you do. So, yeah. I would like the responsiveness of WoW with the complexity of 4. I don't, I don't know if that's possible. Because, like, imagine if you lowered the cooldown of 14. How would you even be able to do a rotation like the one that I just said? I think it's, it'd be too much. FF14 depends more on rotation than WoW. Yep, very much so. Very much so. But let's continue. That, that's just to explain why it feels a little bit slower. It's the thing where um, you will figure that out very quickly if you go in and start, like, Tap tabbing AD ah, repeatedly, right. or if you go to a fight, there I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure there's literally zero acceleration. Interesting, because I've never felt it. So just the animation then? Yeah, it's just the animation. Oh, okay, I know I'm sensitive yep. to that. Mm -hmm. um, hotkeys, yep, doesn't feel as tight as well. It's not, not even close. Yeah, so I think that's something. If they could fix that up, okay, yeah, it would be good. So this they is the can't. Thing, right? It's because of it's because of how the engine works. It's because of it all. I mean, it, you're completely correct, but it's. Everything is all of like the engine stuff running underneath is impeccable. Essentially, when you hit a button, it it does register. It's just the animation, it going and cooldown. That's, yeah, that's it. And all that stuff means that it can be really awkward, but it is it it is a good experience when you get into fights. And like the important thing to mention about this as well is that due to how it is implemented in fourteen, though. You can play with a higher latency without have it, without being as harshly punished as in World of Warcraft. If you have a higher latency, because um, unless you're using macros, because then you're going to have a problem. But if you don't use macros, the servers will actually pre-queue your abilities so that your rotation comes out perfect. So you can't, it is actually possible to achieve the perfect rotation in 14 because of how it is implemented. Like, if you press the buttons at the right time, the rotation can be actually perfect without any room for latency errors because of the fact, and, you know, the cost of that is that it doesn't feel as snappy or responsive as World of Warcraft. Really tight fights don't feel sloppy. Yeah. But uh, as, actually looking at it feels it. As I've got more abilities and went through my rotation a few more times, yeah. it is, it's feeling better to me now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing is, uh, look, how does the game look? And that is an interesting one because mm -hmm. they have one of the worst anti-aliasing problems uh, I have seen. The only <laughs> AA that's available is FXAA, and yeah. that basically just looks like a Vaseline smear mm. on top of the game. So it looks terrible with, with FXAA. He's so uh, right. yeah, with that on. Yeah. Like, you guys remember how they just zoom in onto characters' faces every now and then? And you just start, like, particularly near the end of, uh, of Shadowbringers, when you're, I think it was 5.3, when they zoom in on on the on the Exarch, and you just see, like, big old squares all over him. <laughs> It looks like a goddamn pixel art character. But the cool thing is that they don't shy away from it. They're just like, screw it. This is what we got to work with. It is what it is, man. Boom, done. They do what they got to do. And uh, without it, I mean, the, the, the aliasing is just kind of insane. Mm -hmm. um, I think that their shadows... I. I think it's the color temperature of their shadows actually that I don't yeah, like. This. It's like the shadows are almost uniformly quite gray and they're in like... Yeah, I feel like there should be more of a color cast to their shadows. So there's been like a whole bunch of technical and compositional issues that I've had with the starting content of the game mm -hmm. that uh, they, they do take a little bit to get over. And I think uh, it immediately looks worse than World of Warcraft does because WoW is so stylized. Yeah. And what that basically means is an FF. It you grows can, into I think you, though. You basically need to go and get reshade. Yeah, or something yeah. like that to Reshade. get a good AA implementation. Yeah, I think it's the the actual the actual software is reshade. I think there's storm shade and G shade. I don't think you mm -hmm. need I think to do it. Pre-configured ones sure. designed for FF by people. I've not tried them yet because I have a 4K monitor and only a 980 on my PC, so 
I, would fall I, over, yeah. I want to play at 4K, which means I have graphic settings low so all the time. But it's a tricky thing where I, yeah. I actually feel like I really like a lot of their compositions. Like mm -hmm. their their levels, I just they feel really good to run around in. Yeah. But I think the quality that is there is at least in the Around Reborn stuff that I've seen so far, which is basically just Gridania, it's kind of mm -hmm. betrayed by technical engine problems that yeah. some of them do persist mm. that I've seen from your gameplay of Shadowbringers yeah. content. And that is kind of unfortunate. Now that said, once I actually got through all of those initial things where the yeah. game didn't feel as snappy as well, it yeah. didn't look as crisp and stylized as well, I actually started mm -hmm. to get into things Oddly enough, that's where it started to humongously pick up the pace <laughs> oh, and yeah. uh, be interesting to me. Here we so, go. And the Bard quest is uh, actually really good at the start, at least. The two and a half second GCD. Yep. Don't mind. I, it didn't actually uh, piss me off that much. And I have yeah. played on your higher level Bard. Mm -hmm. uh, so having the higher GCD, but after, you know, whatever level your Bard was. Yeah, that was only 50 or something. Yeah, 50, so it's like you're level, something? yeah, you're like level 50 or 60 Bard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the GCD doesn't feel mega great but you're actually weaving instant cast things in between that yeah. and i think with the design of so many of the rotations like i've been looking mm -hmm. at the samurai one because yep. basically samurai is a really fun i'm only one. playing an archer slash bard until 50 and then i think i want to go samurai mm -hmm. with it uh, he's gonna and go I, he's gonna go full I, weave I, I feel like it should <laughs> he's all work gonna well. go so full on the gameplay weave. front i'm actually quite happy looking at the top end gameplay that i've seen it also like just that they look like in-depth interesting rotations yeah, really so this is one of the things that most people never get over. See, this is one of the things that most World of Warcraft people, they never get over. They just look they just look at the 2.5 seconds GCD and they're like, I don't get it. And they never get over it. They, they don't understand that there's like, listen, dude, you got to level 10. There's 70 more levels. And in a couple of months, there's going to be 80 more levels of abilities that they have to spread out throughout those levels. Having said that, some classes could benefit from getting some abilities a little bit earlier and playing the dungeons without those abilities later on feels really bad. But it's like a lot of people never get over the, the 2.5 GCD thing, which is extreme. As someone that has a max level character in 14, which is not like a big achievement, I'm just saying someone that knows his rotation and whatnot, it is very frustrating whenever someone comes around to like, oh, GCD is terrible. And we try to explain, it's like, it's more complex than that. It gets better. They're like, no, no it's bad. Because a lot of them just go, no, it's bad. It's just bad. And you're trying to explain, no, but you don't understand. There's abilities that you interweave and you're going to need those 2.5 seconds. You're going to wish you had three seconds by the time you get to like max level. But, you know, they just don't get it. They're like, no, it's bad. It's bad. And they never move on from that. It's very frustrating. I wish we had time today to let you play like one of the Eden normal fights on my bard because you would have loved it. Yeah. You also would have died instantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess then to move into experience, what happens whenever the anti-aliasing and the shadows and, you know, it feeling a little bit clunky at times. Yeah. Once you're through that, you have music that thus far I love. Yeah. Uh, I, I love, yeah. And he's and only it, in it, Realm that, Reborn, dude. He's only in Realm Reborn. Wait until he gets to, like, friggin' Stormblood. And, and when he gets to Shadowbringers, dude. Dude. <laughs> he's loving Realm Reborn. Wait for Shadowbringers. You'll see. Definitely. At least the Gridania stuff. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so nah, I, dude, Gudania sucks. Sorry. Uh, and, like, just the vibe, the ambience, I think has been really nice, really successful. It feels cozy, basically. Friggin' Tree Hugger. Specifically is gorgeous. Tree Hugger yeah. City. So I've, I've really, I've, I've actually liked my Gridania experience quite a bit. That's been quite good. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed. Narrative yeah. then is funny, because mm -hmm. I'm playing through A Realm Reborn, yeah. which everybody says is by far the worst content that this game has. Yeah. And it I is. think if if this game started off at the quality level that Shadowbringer seems to be, we would have a very different conversation right now. And I think Definitely. WoW would be in a lot more trouble because we'll, we'll be I think this game likely is a large problem with attracting new players because they have to get through yeah. the content of A Realm Reborn. And, mm -hmm. you know, people might suggest a boost to somebody, but it feels a bit weird to buy a game and then boost through the content. That yeah. does feel bizarre. See, I... 
I was always thinking, okay, maybe you could kind of do some like ARR boost, boost start heavensward, and that might be good. But after playing Shadowbringers, I I would say no, literally, if you boost, you are ruining the game for yourself. Yeah. 100%. So so yeah, that's what I've heard. And True. what I found so far as I've played the game, uh, you know, actually paying attention to the quest text, mm -hmm. I could see the little. You know, I was doing these seemingly seemingly disparate things, helping people out in yeah. the forests of Gradania. Mm -hmm. but they all came together actually really quite satisfyingly. Yeah. And they came together in a way where I actually learned more about the world, yeah. more about the lore and the world building. And I really liked how I, I learned more about the big picture of things by doing small scale things in the world that came together to be more than the sum of, of their parts. So that led to a situation with me where I actually didn't mind the whole talk to this NPC, run over there, talk to that NPC, run over there, mm. because I was starting to get engaged and trying to work out like the little mystery that was going on. And there's another thing there where the amount of XP that you get for those talky quests mm. is not trivial. Not even no. It's, it's, so you actually feel completely fine to do those talky quests because I wonder if he's playing on the a game preferred rewards realm. you appropriately, which makes sense because the narrative that is covered in those quests is important narrative. So it, you it get a, really rel you know, you get a, a, a proper, uh, somebody said, most important question, are you a cat girl? Uh, yes, I think I'm a sun cat girl. He's a cat girl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's... Asmongold's not going to like that, like belly or something, but uh, <laughs> I could not make a character on Zodiac, so I had to go with an old, basically, meme cat girl character that I created and did yeah. not touch at all. Um, but I think there's going to be a few enemy players over this ridge line. Oh, we got a... We, got we got Viking a shield maidens with us, so I think we should stand... But you know what? I'm actually having fun so, thus far. Some other things, then, I guess, hmm. uh, that I've, I've liked. The hunting log system. Hmm. That kind of promote basically uh, you go in. They should they should have expanded you know, the, like hunting five levels of the hunting log system. The hunting log each yeah. one has got. Basically, it's just kill four of this mob, we will give you a little bonus of XP. Do all of that to complete one level of the hunting log. You get a. It sucks bonus that they didn't add that. Uh, the all other it expansions. basically means is when you're running through, you're like, oh, that mob there, I need that for my hunting log. Yeah. Kill it, done. And it's just like that's something you could transplant into WoW, and it would actually be quite cool and fun. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, it's not like it's not a big thing. It's oh, just yeah. that it adds you. It's just like a little thing to be like, oh yeah, it's a nice little thing I can do yeah. as I level. Also, that's um, a, that's in a realm reborn thing that like that, that goes away at fifty. Like it, does, uh, okay. it doesn't go on past fifty. It's purely for like two point X or whatever, and then they change it with more specific. There are big monsters out in the world that spawn every couple of days. Go do this with a group of people. That's cooler for Which like very different hitting end yeah, game though. It's extremely different and it replaces it. But the point is, it's still there, so you can still do it, and yeah. it does. Honestly, I actually think, <laughs> I honestly think a lot of the 2.0 world, I actually learned the names of like very specific places just because I've done the hunting log on so many different, uh, so many different, like, I still there. haven't memorized, so my, my memory is terrible. 30, and then only one of a daily, but it's just, I've done all of the early hunting log stuff. So I'm just going, oh, there we go. Like, I, I know, like you say, where it's like, well, I'm trying, I'm trying, now that I can't think of an example. Yeah, there, there you go, you failed. Course helpfully but i'm just like oh yeah i have a rough idea where that is i have yeah. a rough idea where that is i can i can click the map click the teleport go there oh, i guess actually that's another thing uh mm -hmm. teleport this is a game you just teleport over the as long as you unlock the aether or whatever shard in a zone yep. you click on it you pay some guilt you teleport there mm -hmm. so handy um it doesn't destroy the world or the story or anything like that it works in this game it works in guild wars 2 mm -hmm. so that's something worth thinking about uh but there is a cheaper chocobo uh, yeah. taxi system you can use yeah, as well. So that was interesting. Fates. Yep. Fates. Fates. There are, fates are basically just like little zone events. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there were zone events while I was leveling up in a Realm Reborn content. Yeah. That is above Shadowlands leveling content. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what I've been saying. This is what I've been saying. The most basic of Final Fantasy fourteen. Is still like leagues above Shadowlands. Good God! I so many people were telling me, "Oh man, the storytelling in Sha I got I got this in comments in my videos. I kid you not. People were telling me, "Oh man, the storytelling in Shadowlands is so much better." And I'm just like, "What? Storytelling in Shadowlands is atrocious. It is so bad. What are you talking about? That's crazy."
But it's like another really important thing about 14 is that content, at least until this point, I don't think that content has become obsolete because they're constantly doing events that incentivize players to go do old content and reward them appropriately for doing that old content. And there's always like the different cues that you have, what you call the roulettes. There's always the roulettes that you do that players are incentivized to do roulettes and they can use those players that are going through the roulettes to get additional rewards to fill up groups for older content. Like I've said, I did all of the content in the game with the exception of Eureka. Uh, I think Eureka is the only thing that I didn't do. I did all of the content leading up to Shadowbringer. So like when I got to the end of Realm Reborn, I did all of the raids in Realm Reborn. Uh, the hard thing is coils. Like I really think they need to work on coils because, you know, just thinking about a newer player not experiencing coils. Because like I just got people from my stream to carry me through coils just so that I could experience the story. And it was amazing. Like coils from a story perspective is incredibly important for 14 and they're not doing anything with it. That is one of the biggest problems in Realm Reborn in my opinion. They need to fix coils. They need to do something with coils to get players to run coils. And and it's it's not enough for them to run coils after they they over over level it because it is very important for the story to see the fate of Louis Wa. Like that is super important. Well, how storytelling is by our books and comics. So true. <laughs> like, why is that not there? Yeah, it's just a case of, it's just, it was put there. No, the listen, listen. Shadowlands has fates. They're called world quests. <laughs> it's not good fates. They're just there. Start and it keeps going. And because you can play every job on a character, people are kind of people will just go, "Oh yeah, I've got like you know, I've got rogue like level two. I might That's as well play a little bit." That's actually another thing just... too that I can play different jobs on my same character. That's great because like I'm yep. doing this character. Uh, it is it is an archer. It will turn into a bard. I'm mm -hmm. going to hit level fifty, unlock samurai, probably go over to that. Yep. Great. That's mm -hmm. really cool. I, so I really like that. Yep. Um, so Imagine that having is, to start yeah, a new character. Like, like, seriously, imagine starting a new character to have to play a different class. 